Hey, Lamy, all right. Hey, Gary, good. I uh, suppose, even though you you suffered two defeats, it's perhaps more positive positives than negatives over the past two games, I guess. Yeah, there's there's been a lot to be uh, happy with and proud of. Uh, it's obvious, you know, near enough isn't good enough. We're, we're, we're certainly aware of that as well. So we're always trying to improve. The, the difficult part about this group is that we've had to start again having 13 new faces come in and eight new faces making the debut in round one and seven seven of that eight being in the 13, you know. So it, it is a new team and it is a new group and it's something we just have to manage as we go along. But I'm aware that it's going to take a little bit of time, but, you know, being the, the competitors that we are, we, we want to win as well. So... I thought we've, we've put ourselves in a position to win both games and, and just a little bit of game management and game smarts have let the game slip away. So we're defending well enough. Uh, we've just got to give ourselves an opportunity to attack a little bit better and, and manage the game better. And, you know, that'll put us in a, in a, in a better position. So it sounds like you had an interesting journey back from Perpignan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was an ideal actually, and we're still players are still a little bit tired. So let's just hope it doesn't affect the, the preparations for this week. We, we won't be able to really train until the captains run. So we'll only have one session this week because of that. But you know, we're not going to use that as an excuse. It's it's one of, part of the you know the the, the, the format that we we understand we have to buy into, and it's a good challenge for us. Is this as tough a trip to hook out as it is to Catalan? Maybe given given their farm as well. Uh, look, as in the travel wise, it, it is it is a, a you know a three quarters of a day for us to get up there. But everyone's got to do it. That's in that's in uh, Lancashire, so it, it's that's not an excuse really. We, we've got to make sure we focus on ourselves and and prepare the best we possibly can. You know, they're, they're flying at the moment, whole KR and and playing pretty good. So they'll be a confident team. We've got to go there and try and upset their rhythm. And you know, that's a similar situation than what we were in last year. Now, as a coach, injuries and suspensions are one thing. One player being on TV is another, I guess. <laughs> yeah, look, Keenan Brand is uh, obviously on, on Love Island, uh, as everyone is aware of now. And, you know, when it first happened, um, he approached me about it. I talked to Derek about it. We were very supportive of him doing that because as a club here, everyone within that squad is part of the family and we want to make sure that everyone gets an opportunity within their life, whether it's through rugby league or other other avenues and uh, when since that moment that he's mentioned that the club's got right behind him and that nothing's changed you know we'll, we'll um, support him through this process and when he comes out we'll give him the time to get right and stay a part of the group now I'm sure some of the players are watching him is his boss watching him as well <laughs> he's a he's a funny guy and very popular member of the squad and I, I think it's an opportunity for us to to try and build it into part of our week uh, you know, because because there are some funny scenes that we're looking at and that we're laughing at as a group. But you know, we've we've got that to take our our thoughts away from rugby league whilst whilst we can. But the focus obviously is to make sure that uh, we we pick a squad strong enough to go up to Hull KR this week and get that eighty minute performance done and get our first uh, win ticked off. Now, can I can I just plan it out a bit and ask you about Philly? You know, well, Wayne has been confirmed as England coach. The right decision. On on Wayne being England coach, yes, yeah, that's not for me to really to, to to make comment on. You know, it's it's their processes, and if they feel that that's that's the strongest coach to go with, I'm I'm happy for him. He's a, he's a good guy, and I'm sure you know we'd like to change a few things that happened in this World Cup, but he'll he'll now get the opportunity to to back that up. And as you probably well know, with your Australian list of continuity, even at Test level, is important, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a difficult job. It's a difficult role, you know. Um, I was quite vocal the other day about how we went about our processes through Mal Meninga. I thought he was he was outstanding with managing a team uh, of players that, that were uh, a squad that was picked at the last minute there, and how he managed that process was unbelievable and and you know inspirational. So it is it is a difficult role and difficult job, especially when you're at home coaching your home team at your home World Cup. So I think the next World Cup's in France, so it's another challenge for everyone. Cheers, Lamy. I'll pass you over. Thank you very much. No worries, mate. Thanks. Next up, we'll have well, mate, Callum Walker. Can you just put a, a bit of meat on the bones about the trip back from Perpignan? What actually happened or what went wrong? No, well, we, we were supposed to fly out the same night, obviously, and I don't, don't want to dwell on it too much. It's, it's come and gone, you know, and, and, and no one was to blame, really, but we had, say, a 10 or 11 o'clock flight ended up turning into a 1 o'clock, into a 3 o'clock, and then ended up flying 1 p.m. the next day. So... 
it just messes up your recovery times and and your um, you know your, your flight back and everything else that's that you've, you've planned alongside of that. So I think the the airspace was was um, on a uh, a ban from any any anyone flying in or out of France due to the due to the army or one of the groups that are there. So like I said, you can't do anything about it now. And uh, the good thing about it was. You know, there was plenty of reason to complain about it, but no one complained about it, and I, I credited the group for that. We just got on with it. Uh, and just a, a two-in-one question. How's Edwin Apape, and and then what's the latest with the, the rumours around Joe Shorrocks? Uh, yeah, Edwin Apape is, uh, should be added to the squad, and, and we'll make a decision on him to play, but highly likely to play. Fingers crossed that comes through with that. And, and Joe Shorrocks has arrived at our club today, to start a, a two-week loan from the Wigan Warriors. We're great, very grateful to have him on board here. He's, he's trained with the team this morning. He'll be included in that squad as well, and we'll see how he, he faces up at training this week to see whether he makes that 17 to travel. And obviously, you know him well, Lammy. So what, what, what attributes will he bring to the group? Yeah, obviously a great uh, athlete, a, a great person, and, and more importantly, you know, watched him since he was... You know, 14, 15 in, in the Wigan system there, he, he's played a massive part of the success of their juniors and he's a player that, that oh, as a coach, my philosophy as a coach, I love him because he's, he's as, probably as fit as any player in the competition, but he's also very skillful. He's got big minutes in him, he's got a, he's got a big engine and, and his ability to, to work hard within the group is can set standards for everyone. So the role that he'll play here, you know, we'll work that out as we go along, but certainly a player that... I see, you know, as as someone that can help the group improve. And obviously a view to a longer term deal if, if he impresses in this first fortnight then. Yeah, uh, it's 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 one thing that, uh, you know, it's, you know, we don't have the biggest squad in Super League. It's a squad that we're very happy with. But when, you, when you're adding to it with quality like this, we're only on the, in, a, in a good position. And, and just the last one, was this why Keenan Brand had his double hernia operation in the close season then because of the, the Love Island? Or... <laughs> No, Keenan had that operation just because he needed it. So, uh, you know, he, he hasn't been a part of the group uh, training that much because of his groin. And uh, it's, it's, it's not, he, he wouldn't be playing. He'd probably only be in consideration in the next two or three weeks if he was here training every day anyway. So, uh, you know, we took all of that into consideration, but um, a decision was made on the, on the benefit uh, of supporting the player and the club's got right through, right behind it. The town's right behind him. Everyone's happy for him. We're going to watch and have a bit of fun with it. Smashing. Thanks for me. Thanks, Tommy. Hello. Are you okay? Yeah. Who, who we got there? You go, Drew. You go, Drew. <coughs> you go. Who's, hey, mate, you okay? go on there. Yeah, I, th- I think we've only got one minute left on the recording. So, Rob, do you want to start, uh, stop it now and then start it again? Yeah. Just before it, it cuts out, we'll just we'll stop it after your minute, mate, so that we can move on to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> Go quick, mate. You got a minute? All right, let me. Um, so, so just on just on Keenan, um, how did he? How did it all come about initially? Did, did they contact him, and then when did he contact you about about obviously this potentially happening? Yeah, he just uh, was at one of our early training sessions. Uh, obviously, he's a, he was a part of the Irish World Cup squad, so he came in here later in the in the uh, pre-season, but off the back of an operation. And just came into my office, he said, I need to talk to you about it, brought it up. And at the, uh, initially, I thought, well, that's interesting. What do we do about this? So thought about it, went in front of Derek Beaumont, who was, you know, between the, the two of us, letting Chessie know that, you know, we had a player there that was technically going to be missing for a bit everyone was very supportive of it and uh, uh but we you know it was difficult because you we weren't allowed to tell anyone either because if it had got out they weren't going to allow him onto the show so it was a very difficult process to keep it within and and give the the, the uh, Kent an opportunity to, to go on there just on Shorrocks, uh Lammy where, where do you see him playing obviously he can play I think he's played center loose forward hooker for for Wigan so where do you Kind of seem fitting in. Yeah, he's one of those players that can fill in at, at nearly every position. To be honest with you, he's played under me. He's played halves, centres, back row, nine, thirteen, in the middle. So he's very versatile, and that's the benefit of his position with us at the moment. Uh, I feel that whatever that's going to be, that'll settle down and work itself out over the next couple of weeks while whilst he's here.
Sorry about that. Uh, I think I've seen earlier this week that Edwin's family have arrived, have they? Yeah, Edwin's the, family are here. Yeah. Uh, he's he's very happy that that's happened. His he's, uh, his wife and um, partner and two two kids are here, and it's perfect for him and for us as a club because it obviously gets him in a place where he's where he's very happy, and hopefully his, his best rugby will f- flow off the back of that. So uh, he wasn't in our squad last week because of the ankle, but moving forward, we're going to give him every part of this week to be right and, and make a decision on him on captain's run. Oh, good stuff. Uh, I, th- I think it caught out a little bit before when when you was asked about your papi. Is, will he play this week, or, or is there a late fitness test to be to be done on him? He's included. He's going to be included in the twenty-one as he was last week. But um, yeah, as, as I just mentioned, we'll make a des- decision on him on captain's run, and uh, but he's more than likely going to play. And, and just reflecting on the, the first two two rounds as a whole, obviously they've, they've been losses, but they've been very narrow losses. Are you kind of pleased with how your your squad's kind of stepped up to the the intensity of Super League in these opening weeks? Yeah, it's it's a real difficult process that we're going through to try and get that right. Obviously, as I mentioned, I think we've signed thirteen new players that have come to the club, and within that thirteen, eight of them made the debut in round one, and within that eight, seven of them were starting out of the thirteen. So. There's going to be a little bit of disjointment th- throughout the process of our attack and our defence. And uh, I think the last two games, we've been in a position to win them or we've put ourselves in a position to win them. And just a, a, a bit of bad luck, bad decision making and and sort of, you know, um, unfortunate with some of our skills that we haven't got the, the, the two points within the both games. So we're defending well enough to, to win the matches. I think we've just got to keep improving as a team. And that always takes time when there's a, there's a new group there. and We're prepared to, to see that out, but we've also got to keep in mind that near enough isn't good enough for us. And, and we understand the standards that we set here, so we're working hard to make sure that that first win comes as soon as possible. I guess it's a case of deja vu, isn't it? If you think back to, to this time last year, yeah, you started the, the the championship season with a thin squad and then you yeah. added it added to it as it, as it kind of went along. And, yeah. And the team that finished the season securing championship promotion looked very different to, to the one that started the season. Exactly. Do, you, do you feel like it's going to be like that again where you kind of just add a couple of players as the season goes along to what you've got now? Yeah, it's a good point. And, you know, I think last year working with Chris Chester, who was one of the best in the games, uh, you know, he we certainly built a group uh, moving forward from January, February last year. And by the time we got to the end of the year, as you said, it, it was a really strong squad for championship. But... You know, we found it a really difficult process to to sign and negotiate with players when you're not guaranteed a Super League position in 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 uh, in the on the big table. So uh, we've got through that. We felt that we've signed some real quality with experience. You know, and we're always open to negotiating with players to help build and, and grow the squad, which we will do during the season. And you know, I think I guess Joe Shorrox is a sign of that for for the immediate future uh, for the two weeks at least. And you know, what we've got to do is just make sure that. As a group, we buy into who we want to be, and as a DNA, as a club, and I think we're in a we're in a decent position with that. You know, we've got to make sure that it's a priority that the players that are in that seventeen leopards jerseys every week work hard to get that togetherness, and and the key to, to winning, I feel, is to make sure that we play for each other, and and they're doing it together. We're just a little bit off at the moment. We've got to stay positive and and get through that first process there, where you know it's it's a difficult part of the season. I mean, we went away last year to Featherstone and got beaten badly on a Monday night and from that point on things change you know so hopefully that's a similar blueprint that's happening this year but we're working hard towards that which is which is all we can do at the moment. Well still finally just from me there's been a great buzz around turn hasn't there in, yeah. in the in the lead turn about the Leopards rebrand about being back in Super League mm-hmm. and, and the fans have really turned up in these first two games you had a, a good following in Perpignan at the yeah. weekend and and go back a fortnight ago to to the opening game where where there was more than eight thousand packs inside the LSV. Uh, you've received great support uh, ahead of this season, haven't you? Yeah, we're well, very grateful for our fans and how they've been. And round one here was as as good as I've seen at any any club throughout all the Super League and the NRL. The way that the entertainment was provided and the pre game stuff and around the grounds is just a buzz throughout all the town. And that's what we want to be. That's that's where we want to be as a club, you know, back up in Super League and, and delivering this as a round one for us. So obviously, you know, Derek Beaumont, the owner, and, and Neil Jukes and Chris Chester have done a great job to to, to promote the club to where it is, a new branding with a, a new logo, new players. It's a real fresh start for us moving forward. And, uh, you know, the rugby 
Uh, we haven't had the, the, the win yet on the weekends, but it, that's what the aim is, isn't it? To make sure that, you know, as a club, we're, we're winning on the field and, and, and off the field at the moment.